Timothy chapter 3. I want to talk about self-talk for the last days. Self-talk. You know you're supposed to talk to yourself? Do you know you're supposed to talk to yourself? Amen. Self-talk for the last days. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 12. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 12. 2 Timothy 3 and 12. Self-talk for the last days. Begin with verse 12, it says, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. Now, I don't know if you have noticed or not, and I don't mean to sound like a prophet of doom, but things in the world are getting worse and worse. And, you know, we can talk about a new society and a new world and all that kind of stuff we want to, but for the most part, the world is going to continue to get worse. It's going to get worse and worse. Think about it just for a moment. Think about how things were when you were 20 years old. Think about how things were when you were 20 years old. And now think about the way things are now. And what you're going to discover is, since you were 20, and for those of you who are not 20 yet, just hang on. When you were 20, well, I say it like this, things have gotten a lot worse since you were 20. Is that right? Amen. Things have gotten a lot worse. I'm talking about in the world with the world situation. And not only have they gotten worse, but they're going to continue to get worse and worse. Can I tell you the truth? Amen. Things aren't going to get better in the world situation. Things are going to get worse. Why do you say that? Because the scripture says that there are people who are getting worse and worse. People are in the world and people uh, deal with the uh, culture that's in the world. And if people are getting worse, things are going to get worse, and the world is going to get worse. The Bible says in verse 13, it explains it, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But then something's also going to be going on because people who are trying to live according to the principle of Jesus, we're going to find out that in the last days they're going to be persecuted. Verse 12 says, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Is that in your Bible? I don't have to remind you of what's going on. You can see it. So what are saved people to do in this day when things in the world are getting worse and worse? Verse 14 tells you what we need to do. It says, But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned, and has been assured of. So our job, even in the midst of a society that's getting more sinful and worse and worse and worse, our job as believers in Jesus Christ is we must continue in the word. Jesus said, if you continue in the word, then you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth. The truth will make you free. So, you know what the word of God is? The word of God is God's word to his children. God's word. He's a, he's a father. It's Father's Day. He's our heavenly father. And our heavenly father has given us his word. Is that right? And the word of God is his word to his children. Now, God the father always keeps his word. Always. God always keeps his word. So the word of God is God's word to his children. As I said many times, I said again today, once you got saved, there is no bad news in the Bible. Amen. And really, if someone is leading you in the scriptures, there's really not any bad news in the Bible for unsaved because you can be saved. 
and the gospel is good news. It's good news to the sinner that you can be saved and you don't have to spend eternity in a terrible place. The Lord gave me a revelation. I just dropped this for free and I won't stay here long because you aren't going there. But you know, hell's going to be a terrible place. And watch this. In hell, people are going to be in darkness. There's no light in hell. Are you hearing me? So people are going to be in hell in pitch darkness. And they're going to be being burned by fire they can't even see. Because you can't see in the dark. So there are going to be some invisible fire burning people that's in total darkness and you're going to be looking around in total darkness. Well, I just don't think God will send anybody there. Well, you, God doesn't. You send yourself there. But this is a believer's meeting. So look at it say, I thank God I ain't going there. I ain't going. So he says in verse 15, which I did not read in the text, but I read now, it says, and that from a child, thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. So while we're here in this world, that's getting worse and worse, and it is getting worse and worse. It is. And it's not going to get better. Man can't fix it. But guess what? We live in a realm within the world that's called the kingdom of God. And in the kingdom of God, it's an invisible realm. Jesus said it doesn't come with observation. You can't just go out and say, there it is over there, there it is over there. Jesus said the kingdom is in you. So guess what? You live within a spiritual realm called the kingdom of God and the kingdom of God which you were born again into is where God rules. He rules in the kingdom of God. Now, you know, they used to sing the song, God's in control. He may not be in control of everything out there, but he's in control of everything in here. In my life. Are you hearing me? Because you are a kingdom citizen right now. Say me, say, I'm a kingdom citizen right now. So in the midst of all that's going on in the world, which is getting worse and worse, and uh, I know you wish it were getting better and better, but it's getting worse and worse. Uh, in the midst of this, uh, I want to give you something to say. I want to give you something to say to yourself that will sustain you and maintain you in this evil world that is getting worse and worse. I'm going to give you something you can say. You know, the Apostle Paul said something one time. He talked about some things that were not necessarily things we would desire. And then he said, what shall we say to these things? What shall we say? So that lets you know then that there's some things we ought to be saying to things that are contrary to the will of God. Can I tell you that the kingdom of God is voice activated? It's voice activated. My daughter told me the other day, she said, you can make your phone, you know, you make your phone or uh, uh, call numbers that's in your address book. I said, no, I didn't know that. She said, yeah, you just, you go into settings and you, and you set it that it will respond every time you say, hey Siri. Hey Siri, call Della. And you know what it'll do? It'll call Della. It is voice activated. Did you know the power of life and death is in your tongue? You know the Bible says you can have what you say? See? So therefore, there are some things we ought to be saying to these things. There are some things we should be saying to these things. What things? All these things that's going on in the world around us. Listen, that will bring us to the point where we can be sustained and maintained in the midst. You know, Jesus said one place, he said, you know, it's, I'm not, don't pray that I take you out of the world. He said, pray that you'd be kept. 
The word kept means protected. See, because, you know, one day, according to the scripture, I read the church is going to be taken out. And it's going to be bad stuff. Because we are the ones right now in the earth who are holding back things from going totally berserk. Because God got some people here. I want scripture and verse for that. Okay, God had to get his people out of Sodom and Gomorrah before it was burned up. I need scripture and verse for that. God has some people that he had to get out through ark before the flood. God got some people in the earth that he's going to get out. But we must occupy till he comes. And we must be about the father's business until he comes. But the Lord told me to give you something to say today that will maintain you and sustain you even in the midst of all this evil in this world and all these things that are getting worse and worse. Scripture and verse for that is the Bible says in the book of Ephesians that we should speak to ourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. And even during the day we should be singing and making melody in our hearts to the Lord. Man, that will keep you from flipping out. You know, people say people that talk to themselves or uh, something wrong with them. I say that if you don't talk to yourself in this day, there's going to be something wrong with you. Amen. Bible says, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns, in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your hearts. To the Lord. That's Ephesians 5.19. So what, to, what I'm going to do today is I'm just going to give you just a portion of a psalm, of a psalm. The Bible says speak to yourselves in psalm. I'm going to give you just a portion of a psalm that you can speak to yourself even in the midst of this world that's filled with violence, shortage, greed, pressure, evil men and women. Are you saved? Yes. All right, well, you can speak this to yourself anytime you begin to doubt. Anytime. Anytime you start to doubt. I'm going to give you something. And it's so simple that some of you are going to say, is that all it is? Let me tell you something. The Bible says, speak to yourself in Psalms, hymn and spiritual song, singing and making melody in your hearts to the Lord. See, uh, let me help you again because God doesn't want his way difficult. His yoke is easy. His burden is light. He doesn't want you to be lost and he doesn't want it hidden. Now he does want you to search the scriptures. That's what kings do. Kings search out matters. And he's made you kings and priests under him. So you, you have to get in the Bible and dig and study. But the only reason it's hidden is for the purpose of revelation. That's why the Bible calls it mysteries. A mystery is something God has hid just for the purpose of of it being revealed and the Bible gets deeper and deeper so the longer you stay saved watch this the more you have to dig but there's treasure in the field if you dig it are you hearing what I'm saying so so what I'm gonna give you are you ready for this I'm gonna give you what to say all right turn to Psalm 23 I'm gonna tell you what to say Psalm 23. Psalm 23. And what you're going to say is just one verse. Say, I'm going to show you how it works. Because this is what the Lord told me to tell you. And this is going to sustain. This one verse is going to sustain you in this evil day. See, because we're living in an evil day. Scripture said, having, all, having done all to stand in the evil day. See, this is an evil day. It's an evil day. We serve a good God, but this is an evil day. And people, as we saw in the book of Timothy, Paul's letter, people are waxing worse and worse. Guess what's happening? They are deceived and being deceived. 
That's the day we live in. People under, under deception. People under deception. See? <laughs> People under terrible deception. And when we live in a day now where there's a strong delusion out there and people are just being people are just being blinded more and more by the enemy and then they and but they feel like I'm doing okay I'm doing okay so let's go a little further let me give it to you hit verse 1 just verse 1 verse 1 says the lord is my shepherd i shall not want Now some of you say, is that all? Man, that'll hold you. That'll hold you in this evil world. Yeah, and this is what you got to say to yourself. You just got to say it to yourself. And this is the word God told me to give the church today to sustain you. Sustain you and maintain you. Even in the midst of of the evil see this is what's going to sustain you just just these few words the lord is my shepherd the lord we're lord yahweh god he is the lord is i said he is people might try to act like he isn't but he is he is the Lord is. See, the Lord is. See, <laughs> I was in a conversation with a man the other day who was, you know, trying to talk about different translations and how some of them are this and the other, and and, and talking about the King James Bible. I just sat there and listened because you need to understand God in His sovereignty. He's sovereign enough to get you what you need. <laughs> The day I quit seminary is the day that the teacher who had several seminary degrees and I was enrolled in the class, got up every Saturday morning at five o'clock, rolled and stayed in class all day long. And the man stood up and he said, what is the Bible? And the people in the class start responding, it's the word of God, it's the word of God. And he slapped his hand on this, the Bible is not the word of God. This is Dr. So-and-so. He says that the Bible is a book that explains how God dealt with a certain group of people in the earth. Lady sitting beside me in class started crying. She said, oh, oh. She said, did you hear what he said? I said, yeah. I said, I heard it. And so it was about halfway through the semester. And after the break, I never went back. Amen. Lord said, what you need is Bible college. You don't need seminary. You need to learn about the Bible, not learn to question the Bible. Because God in his sovereignty can get you what you need. And if you're not going to believe the Bible, what you going to believe? I'm going on. One of my relatives told me, said, what they're trying to get you to do. You, 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 should, you shouldn't have left. You should have stayed. They're trying to get you to think critically. Listen, I don't want to critique the Bible. I want to believe the Bible. So, he, so, so this, this little simple phrase. It's beyond poetry. It's truth. It's truth. The Lord is. I said he is. But then it gets better because the Lord is my. My. All right, the word my, just the word my. The word my is a possessive pronoun which emphasizes, watch this, which emphasizes me alone. It is a possessive pronoun which emphasizes me alone. So the Lord is mine. 
Jesus is mine. Everywhere I go, everything I do, Jesus. I said he's mine. Mine in the morning, mine in the evening. All the day long, I'm singing this song. Jesus is mine. Listen, this emphasizes the fact, watch this, that, that, that regardless of who else is around or who else knows him, he's mine. Someone said, if you had been the only person in the earth, Jesus will still die for you. And they call him a personal savior. He's, he's mine. Come on, somebody said, he's mine, he's mine, he's mine. The Lord, Yahweh, God, Father, God, is, he is, never was, he is. My personal, personal, my what? Shepherd. Shepherd is an ancient occupation where a person is responsible for leading, feeding, and protecting, and giving rest for sheep. You hear what I said? It's an occupation, ancient op occupation, where one is responsible for leading, feeding, protecting, and giving rest for sheep. An ancient occupation where one is responsible for leading, feeding, protecting, and giving rest for sheep. Giving rest for sheep. Shepherd, an ancient occupation where one is responsible. He's responsible. He's responsible. He's my shepherd. So guess what? He's responsible for leading me. He's responsible for feeding me. He's responsible for protecting me. He's responsible for making sure I get rest. See, he's my, what is he? He's my shepherd. He's responsible. I said he's responsible. He's responsible for leading me. He's responsible for feeding me. He's responsible for protecting me. He's responsible for giving me rest. And the Bible the Bible likens people to sheep. Oh, we like sheep have gone astray. Bible said Jesus looked down the multitude and he was moved with compassion because he said they, they were like, people were like sheep without a shepherd. And the Bible called Jesus the good shepherd. What did he do? He gives his life for the sheep. Are you hearing me? The Lord, the Lord. And see, the Bible says that God have made Jesus both Lord and Christ. He's Lord and Christ. So Jesus then must be our Lord to be our shepherd. See, and what do you do to be saved? You confess Jesus as Lord. You confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. Thou shalt be saved. It's voice activated. Being saved is voice activated. At some point in time, you got to say, I'm saved. See, I'm saved. It's voice activated. You got to confess him with your mouth. What am I confessing? That he is my Lord. I said, he's my Lord. Lord means authority. Lord means master. So when I'm, when I'm saved and I say Jesus is Lord of my life, that means he is the authority in my life. Yeah. Not what they do in the world, he's my authority. Yeah. Not what they say is right, what he says is right. He is the authority. And he has the final authority because he is my Lord and he's my master. Yeah. Juneteenth, we don't like the word master. We were set free. Listen, be set free, be set free from the slave master, but don't never be set free from Jesus. Amen. 
He's your master. He's your authority. And so, 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 so when Jesus is your Lord, guess what? Jesus is, Jesus is responsible. How can I sleep at night? Because Jesus never sleeps. And he's responsible. What's he responsible? He's responsible as my shepherd for leading me, for feeding me, for protecting me, and for giving me rest. So in the midst of all this mess that man has made in the earth, I said that man has made. In the midst of all this mess that man has made in the earth, I must say something. I must say something. I, there's something I got to get in the atmosphere and there's something I got to get on the inside of me. I got to say it. In the midst of the mess, in the midst of all that's going along, I've got to just stand up bold and say, the Lord is my shepherd. Come on, practice with me. Say, the Lord is my shepherd. Now, I hear you, Pastor, but it's not, it's not really real to me. So we're going to play a game. We're going to play a game. When, when I point to you, when I point like that, I want you to say, the Lord is my shepherd. I want you to say it loud. loud. When I point like that, all right, let's practice. The Lord is my shepherd. Okay. Gas is high. Is high. The Lord is my shepherd. Russia invaded Ukraine. People getting shot at the grocery store. Children getting shot at school. Republican and Democrats can't agree. Washington going crazy. I got family drama. Sometimes I feel depressed. Now, 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 in the world, they, they, they have a saying they call, you need a, a, a mantra. And the world just tries to, the world in the dark side just tries to steal some things from the kingdom. Because the devil can't create anything, he can only counterfeit. So I'm going to go beyond that. I'm going to say, this is your confession of faith. For these crazy times. See, that's your confession of faith. Are you still here? Now, 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 there's a result. There's more. Because if the Lord is your shepherd, you shall not want I know, I know you've been hearing this since you were in elementary school. You learned how to say it in Sunday school a long time. But see, you got to get the meaning. If the Lord is your shepherd, if he's your leader, your feeder, your protector, the one that causes you to rest, you shall not want. Come on now. The word want means, watch this. The word, the word want means to be in need or be lacking. 
The word want means to be in need or lacking. The word want means to be deprived or to become empty. To become empty. Man, how many of y'all in your life have been close to being at the bottom of the barrel? <laughs> but 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 every time you went back God had something else and you never found yourself on E See that's why that's why worry don't make no sense that's why you got to talk to yourself. Yeah. Got to talk to yourself. You've been in some contests, but you always came out. Yeah. Huh? If the Lord is your shepherd, you will never lack. You'll never be in deprivation. You'll never be deprived. You'll never come up empty. And even when it looks close, you still more than a conqueror. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, people get, real, people get real theological when we get to things like this. Well, now, Pastor Lawson, uh, I hear you saying this, but all over the world, you know, there are people who are empty and lacking. I was reminded the other day, you know, we're thinking about the people in Ukraine, which is a terrible thing. It's a terrible thing. And, uh, and people say, surely, surely God had some people over there. And I, why, didn't, why didn't God intervene? I was reminded when Katrina came, I'm talking about the hurricane. And you know what people do is, people in the world and some meaning, some thinking they're uh, 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 well-meaning saints in a, in a time of tragedy, all of a sudden, Everybody knows what the church should be doing. And it's a major indictment if you are saved because you are talking about yourself. But it's, it's amazing because when Katrina came, they were interviewing all these pastors down in New Orleans, New Orleans, down there. They were interviewing them. And they came to a... Uh, 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 what's his name? He sings, used to be Paul Morton. They came to Paul Morton. Got him on national TV. Got him on national TV. Thought they were going to put him up in a corner. And uh, uh, Bishop Morton, we understand you have a rather large church down there in New Orleans. And we understand that you have hundreds of buses. And we want to know where were all these hundreds of buses that you have during this hurricane? Mr. Morton said, the people belong to my church are riding them out of town. <laughs> it, it hit some of y'all about midnight, really. <laughs> but see, a whole lot of folk left Ukraine by train a whole lot of folk got out. Yeah. Ain't getting no help now. Yeah. See, see, you, you just can't put God in a box. The Lord is your shepherd. And I, and I don't know how he's going to do it all the time. But because he's a shepherd, he's a father, he's God, he's mine. He makes ways. And guess what? You won't lack. I said you won't lack. You know why? Because the earth is the Lord's. And the fullness thereof. And you know what? Now that you saved, you know who we are? We are his people. And we are the sheep of his pasture. And so sheep don't have to understand. 
All sheep need to do is follow the shepherd. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. And a stranger they will not follow. There's a beautiful truth about Bible times. And that is, when shepherds had things to do, they bring all their sheep together so they could run and take care and transact business and they leave a few of the shepherds there with them. And when they would come back, they had the sheep down in the valley, they all mixed up. They would be all mixed up. And so one shepherd would go over on one hill, one go on another hill, another go on another hill, another go on another hill, and each one of them would call their sheep with their special call. And all the sheep, even though they were mixed up, when they would hear their shepherd's voice, they'd go where they heard their shepherd. Jesus said, my sheep know my voice, and a stranger they will not follow. You don't have to understand everything, just know the shepherd's voice. And follow the shepherd. And the shepherd, let me tell you what he'll do. He'll feed you. He'll protect you. And every time you know, God will show off, man. He shows off sometimes. He just show off. He just he show he shows off and give you testimonies. He show off. He show off. I'm sitting there on the back porch, nodding, half asleep, reading the book, and wake up just in time enough to see a snake walk, go right by my feet, barefooted. The Lord woke me up right on time. I put a killing on that snake too, boy. He will not rise again. Small thing to you, but it's not to me. <laughs> Looking out the window the other day, I said, Della, come here. This is just the other day. This is not the same snake, new snake. I said, come here. I said, what's that crawling out there by the garage door? She said, that's a snake. I put a killing on that one. <laughs> he will never rise again. Huh? Della says, I beat the snake so bad she was scared that I might give out. <laughs> you pray for me, because Kurt, I want to call him a few names, but I didn't. <laughs> but see, he shows off. Come on now. He protects you when you don't even know you're in danger. I can't get no witnesses. So he'll lead you, he'll feed you, he'll protect you, and he, he'll give you rest. So the Lord just told me to tell you today, and I'm finished. He said, talk to yourself. What do you say as we see all this crazy stuff? And it's going to get crazier. And right. That means I'm not going to lack. I'm not going to lack. That's what the word want means. One translation says, since the Lord is my shepherd, watch this, I have everything I need. And you know, some of us have been walking with the Lord so long, we kind of take things for granted, you know, and God, I mean, we're some blessed folk. We're some blessed folk. I mean, we're we really blessed. Ain't no, it's the Lord. They used to sing a song over in my wife's church when we were growing up and said, look where he brought me from. See, see we forget. We get amnesia because we, we get kind of used to where we are now. We just kind of take things for granted. But, but the Lord, the Lord is supplying our needs. Amen. 
I had a grandma, one of my grandmama used to say something. She said, no. she said, uh, uh, I got sick when I was in college. Had to come home for a semester and I got real thin. And she said, uh, she said, the devil was just whipping up on me. And she said, she said, boy, <laughs> so you don't need to get too small now, she said, because if you go to the hospital, you need a little meat to sustain you while you're, in, while you're sick. <laughs> I'm going to show you how blessed some of us are. If some of us went to the hospital, we could go years without eating. <laughs> We don't have to worry about starving in the hospital. <laughs> oh, go and laugh at yourself. But you know what that says? That says you're blessed. Because you know what the Bible, the Bible uses the word fat in a positive sense. That means you got more than enough. God has made us fat. I'm not talking about meat now. I'm talking about fat. Abundantly supplied. And, and the Bible says, the Bible says, you, I have everything I need. See, see, you may not have everything you want. My God shall supply. Watch this. All your need. Come on, talk to me. And then sometimes we get, well, I want this and I want that. Come on, grow up. Do you have what you need? Did you have some breakfast this morning? Was your light bill paid? The gas was high, but could you get the work anyhow? God will supply what you need. Uh, so here's what you do. Things gonna get worse and worse. They are. I wish I could tell you. You know why? Because people are getting worse and worse. People do some things now people wouldn't have done years ago. And then if people had done it, they would have done it in private. They'd have been hiding. People now don't hide. They get right on Facebook and do crazy stuff. Do stuff that years ago would have been just totally immoral. And this is an immoral society. People have lost all their morals. It's going to get worse and worse. It's going to get worse and worse and worse and worse and worse. Out there. But in here. The kingdom's in you. And guess what? You don't have to be afraid. I told you the other week. During the pandemic. During this two year pandemic. More millionaires have been made during the pandemic than any other time in history. Are you hearing me? If God, if God leads you to do something, do it. I ain't getting no help. If he leads you to do something, do it. See, when others are going down, this might be your time to expand. This may be your time to launch out. This may be your time to fill a void. And God will feed you. Yes. Hadn't he fed you thus far? Yes. He'll protect you. Yes. And he'll give you rest. You. Talking about being fed, you know what the Bible says? The Bible says he'll lead you into green, well-watered yes. pastures. This is good news to me when I heard it. He'll lead you into green pastures. So as things get worse and worse. Say, that's what you say. And say it with, with boldness. And I shall not. I shall not want. So Jesus said, Jesus looked, he said, he said, there are people out there like sheep without a shepherd. So guess what you do? Guess what you do? Tell people about your shepherd. What do you tell them? He supplies all my need. I lack nothing I need. Let me hear you say this. I lack nothing I need. 
And so most of us, for most of us here, he gives you more than you need. Amen. You know why? So you could be a source of supply. Amen. So he says, tell people, tell them, tell them. See? Well, you know, I don't, I don't talk much about the Lord because, you know, you know why you don't? Because you want everybody to like you. Because the scripture says, if you live godly, you're going to suffer persecution. But Jesus said, when you're persecuted for righteousness sake, you're blessed. The first sermon I ever heard T.D. Jakes preach, his subject was, can you stand to be blessed? And his premise was, if you're blessed, you're going to have haters. So can you stand it? Deion Sanders said the other day, he said, the primary characteristics of success is haters. See, so Jesus said, when you are persecuted for righteousness sake, you're blessed. You're blessed when me and revile you say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. One translator said, jump up and spin around. Because they persecuted the prophets which came before you. One definition in the Amplified Bible of being blessed is to be enviable. Anybody ever read that before? So guess what? If you're really blessed, somebody out there is going to be envying you. But guess what? That's a part of the package. So tell people who bless you. Yeah. Say, the Lord is my shepherd. That's what you tell them. See? And you run into people that's lacking, not having what they need. Tell them, say, the Lord is my shepherd. He supplies all my needs. I want one witness. Is there anybody here the Lord's been supplying your need? See? Well, all he wants us to do as a church is to make him famous. That's our job. Our job is to make Jesus famous. Everywhere you go, just give him the credit. Will you stand on your feet today? Y'all pray for me because since we came back, I've been trying to do these 30 minute sermons and they ain't working. <laughs> I've been trying. He supplies all you need. Thank you. All of you. Even to the extent that you have more than enough. All he wants you to do is tell it. And here's your response now. It's going to get crazy. You might turn on the news and see anything. You might read the paper, see anything. And what? The Lord is your shepherd. Not no donkey, not no elephant. Who? And? I shall not want. It's real, Jill. It's real. The Lord is your shepherd. And you shall not want. And when the Lord is your shepherd, you read it when you get home. David said, You get stalked. He said, You get stalked. When the Lord is your shepherd, you got two stalkers. He said, he said, everywhere you go, you're being stalked. Yeah. Come here, Jeffrey, you and Mike, follow me. He said, everywhere you go, everywhere you go. Come on, y'all, come on. Come on, Jeffrey, come on. Come on. Good news. 
grace and mercy. <laughs> if you're here today, you're not saved. Come on, y'all. Come on. Come to Jesus. Come on, y'all. Come on. If you're here, you're not saved. I'm going to give you an invitation to get with the good shepherd. He gives his life for the sheep. Oh, that was good exercise. Whew. If you're saved, you know it. Wave at me, wave at me, wave at me. If you're here and you can't wave, if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. And every believer needs to be connected to involved in and active in a local ministry a local church so if you're not part of a local assembly that's bible believing and bible teaching i want to give you an invitation not saved not in a bible believing bible teaching church pastor i used to be in a church a long time ago but you know i moved somewhere else and i never found another church or I used to be in a church and they did some stuff I didn't like and, and I just left, never went back. You need to be attached to an active in a local church. Everybody that's a believer. Yeah. Ain't gonna no amen. See, some of y'all would say amen because I say active in. But that's what you need to be need to be attached, you need to be invested with your time, your talent, and your resources in a local assembly. God said, I give you pastors after my own heart. They'll feed you with knowledge and understanding. Everybody needs one. Come to Jesus. Come to Jesus. If you're here, won't you come right now?